Miranda Lambert joins us in our brand new HQ at Apple Music. Uh, congratulations on the release of new, your new album, Start to Finish Brilliant. It's, it's a heavy record and um, you took your time to make it. In fact, you took time off to make it. And I wonder how when you came back to the writing process, if you felt like a different writer. I did. My last record before this one was called The Weight of These Wings, and it was a double album, <laughs> which is not ideal to put out, especially right now with the way music is being released and consumed. But I had gone through a divorce, and I had moved back to Nashville, and so I was really just deep in the songwriting part of it. Yeah. And I needed to just put that many songs out just for myself. And You think it was a coping mechanism in a weird way, looking probably, back on it? Probably, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we're doing this for anyways, for yeah. everything in our life, right? But, mm. um, but so then I approached Wild Card with like, Whatever happens, happens. I changed producers, which I had never worked with another producer besides Frank Liddell in my whole career. Mm. And um, with his blessing, I asked Jay Joyce to do this record with me, who's brilliant. So that's kind of how the, I don't know, the reinvention a little bit happened, but also because I was a little bit minded, just I didn't have a theme for the record or like a, mm. a certain order I wanted the songs to go in or I didn't overthink it, I guess. That's the beauty of space. What was the most rewarding part of those, of that time in between 17 years old all the way through to the point where you decided to step away and just collect your thoughts? That I get so much more energy from quiet time than I do noise, which I used to really thrive on just keeping it going. Also, just I took eight months off the road. Well, I got married, so it's probably not going to give me another eight-month <laughs> window because I ran off and got married, but I, <laughs> but I, I had time to, like, hang with someone mm. and have a life and go out on weekends and Mondays I'm all like y'all want to go out and everyone's like no it's Monday I'm that's like, so funny <laughs> you're the same person that decided to check out of normal life at 17 yeah. everyone else is like I had to break it to you in the last 13 14 years we've all got jobs yeah I'm like oh dang that sucks I'm okay to be the only one at the dive bar on the stool on Mondays I've, I've just accepted it during that time away I wonder whether you allowed yourself the space to just be able to reflect on your on on what you've made how productive you've been and what you would achieved because you just don't in the moment do you, you think about that success when you're in it you don't and I still feel some days like I'm I've so far to go yeah. so much longer but I think my goals have become less career oriented like everything used to be just career I didn't mm. even have personal goals really mm. I didn't know to set them and my life showed that some I had some failures personally but when I was really successful professionally so yeah. I find now that a lot of my goals are a little it's more balanced to have more personal goals too than just like career goals. Where did that early drive come from? To be that ambitious at that young an age, to be entering into talent shows and to make noise and to be noticed. And where do you think that came from? I feel like the drive came from just not being good at anything else. Wow. I mean, music was the only thing that was natural to me. I tried all of it, sports and cheerleading and all of mm. that. And I just never was very good at anything. I sat down with my parents and I was like, I do not want to go to college. Like, what am I going to college for what? <laughs> like, and how were they? Were they understanding and accepting of, of your desire to do something outside of the grid? They were, but they were very like, you need to make this work yeah. because we have this amount of money set aside for you and there's no backup plan. Yeah. So that's probably where the drive came from. I know how much of a fan of music you are and how much you love to help artists in the way that you were helped early on. But I'm going to step outside of the country space for a second and talk about Lana Del Rey, who I feel her influence now is just spread beyond any genre. Yeah, I love her. I think she's so um, mysterious, mm. but I get it too. I feel like I kind of know what she's talking about. She walks the line so well between the mystery of what Lana is as an artist, but also she's so down to earth and cool yeah and i've never met her or anything oh, so i don't her. but i feel like i want to know yeah. but then you almost feel like you can't with her <laughs> you know what i mean like, that's not available but i think she's incredible and her writing is incredible and she's just she's a poet you know lana del rey i don't think that comes as much of a surprise but there might be things that you do listen to not necessarily new that might surprise people i'm a huge chris cornell Fan and oh. Audio Slave is like, that's I guess the one pe thing people always can't believe. They're like, you like Audio Slave? Uh, uh, you know, a song like Fire Escape. Um, where do we find you when you're writing that song? What are you trying to achieve there? Well, in New York because I married a New York police officer. Yeah. And I am from East Texas, a tiny town. Grew up on a farm. We had porches, not fire escapes. <laughs> Our fire escapes were the window. <laughs> So, like, I never even... Doors been, unlocked the whole thing. Yeah, I've never even been on a fire escape, so spending time in New York definitely inspired that. But I realized, like, sitting on a fire escape, like, in Soho here in 
this, the music and the noise and it's the people. It's one of the best experiences It's amazing. Ever. There's nothing about it that's not magic. And so, yeah, Fire Escape was definitely like actually riding it, sitting on, on a fire escape. <laughs> yeah. How does an NYPD guy meet a country superstar? How I mean, does it happen? It's like a Hallmark Christmas movie. It's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. fun. It's literally a Monday night movie. <laughs> it is. I was impressed for, um, I have a band called the Pistol Annies yeah. and we're doing Good Morning America and he was security. One of the girls, and she was really pregnant, and she was like, "That cop's hot." <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> she's like, "You should invite him to the show." And I was like, "I don't have any game. I don't have to invite someone to a show." <laughs> like, so, so they kind of did it behind my back, which was really sweet. And really, I think it just, I just clicked. It's so crazy. Cool. It's awesome. I want to pick something else that you've chosen uh, here from this list of artists uh, that you picked. And there's two artists right here, back to back. Um, neither of them knew, but both of them very good friends, uh, Selena Gomez and Taylor Swift. I didn't know a lot about Selena's music. I've obviously known Taylor for a while, but... Um, she's never had a moment like this. I'm sorry. She's got hits, but Lose You to Love Me honestly, is out like, of control. I was reading about it, so I was obviously curious, and I feel like I know what it feels like to be that honest and to be that honest in public yeah because i did it and i continue to do it so i just admire it it can't affect your process but what's the balance like between the two being true to your art but knowing that you have to face the public every time you do it i feel like i started that way so that was kind of what set the bar there isn't an option now you know yeah there isn't an option to to record songs or write songs that are not my absolute truths and when people say you wrote exactly how I feel, I'm mm. like, okay, well then that was worth it. <laughs> what was the most wanted. powerful experience on making this album with you and Jay, where you knew that you had really reached the touch the void with your writing in this particular album? For some reason, Dark Bar sticks out when you ask that question because I gr started in honky tonks, you know, 17, and I've always felt comfortable in those places, whether mm. it's on stage or just hanging out, because it's a non-judgment zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I came from the Bible Belt and sang in church and. So when I started singing secular music, it was like, oh my goodness, you're playing a bar on Saturday night and you're missing church. You know what I mean? It was a big deal. Yeah, but that's where the lost people are. And I like the lost people because I'm lost too. <laughs> Working with Jay Joyce. And I wonder how that felt getting into a room with, with songs that you'd crafted and knowing full well from his previous records that he was going to destroy it a little bit. Um, it was a little scary, but it also gave me like this nervous energy. But it's Jay. And yeah. I signed up for it and I was ready for it excited yeah he's chain smoking away he has a toaster <laughs> and he lights his cigarettes in it if you're gonna <laughs> smoke you might as well light it with a toaster <laughs> like. the song that you've done with with Marin what were your first impressions on Marin when you met her because she's still a young artist as far as I'm concerned I got her EP and I knew I was like she's she's the next one like she's She's brave, but she's kind of aloof about it. Mm -hmm. She just does her thing. Yeah. And she's an amazing singer. Yeah, most definitely. You know, we're two Texas girls. Why not sing a song about maybe possibly killing someone that deserves it? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's all in fantasy on country songs anyway. So. Totally. Have you ever written a song from a dream? I never remember in the morning. I've dreamed so many songs, but I'll wake up and be like, I wrote a song last night, but I don't know any of it. <laughs> what a waste. Do you have any recurring dreams or throughout your life? I have... A recurring dream every time a record comes out wow what is it it's like snakes everywhere and i think that comes from like early on the business You're like gotta watch for snakes in the wow, grass you know what i mean so, so every time i put a record out i feel like i dream of snakes that's a music video yeah so touring are you excited about that especially now obviously in your relationship are you excited about that new chemistry yeah and i love i love to tour i, I love to just play music and just last saturday in orlando was my birthday show the crowd was amazing and they were singing the words to tequila does and it's brand new and it's not out or a single or anything but when they were singing it, i like took my ear out and was like this is happening i was just soaking it in and it's a good reminder 